My dear Heavenly Father, once again, say we say just thank you for the blessings of the Sabbath and uh, thank you for taking us throughout the day. And uh, as we even start the week, Lord, let your word enrich us and give us the strength to be able to face that uh, which we shall face during this week in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, <clears throat> welcome to our 1888 uh, Minneapolis uh, series, and uh, this is number this is number fifteen in uh, our presentations. This is uh, number fifteen in our presentation, and uh, we would like to look at uh, uh, another presentation, and uh, this one is entitled. Um, the warning and uh, the promise, the warning and the promise. And so uh, I believe that uh, the series has been a blessing unto us as we bring it to a close. And uh, we will go forth and uh, view these things and try to examine if we what we have uh, I really believed in is the truth or a lie. And I go, the, the last six uh, presentations that will follow this one it is about um, the, diagnos the analysis, diagnosis, and uh, the solution of uh, 1888. And so watch out for those uh, uh, presentations. They will be of uh, benefit. It is not just good to have uh, a diagnosis of a problem, but it is good also to look into the solutions. The reason why the world is so much in trouble is because um, many people understand we are in problems and everyone is pointing at the problem, but no one wants to point at the solution of um, the matter. And so I take uh, six presentations to go through the analysis, diagnosis, analysis and uh, the solution of uh, the problem. And so uh, um, the warning and the promise. What can we learn from this? The, the warning and the, the promise. What, what can we learn from all this? And so, uh, yet uh, Satan uh, was not uh, destroyed. The angels did not even then understand all that was involved in the great controversy. The principles at stake were to be more fully revealed, and for the sake of man, certain existence must be continued. Now, the things that we are going through, um, it is for God to help us understand better what are the issues of the great controversy. And the issue is about uh, the righteousness of God, the character of God. His government has been doubted if it is the best government that can be set up. But then um, we have to understand that uh, God has done all that he can do so that um, we may come to a position when we make the decisions that we are making, we will not make it um, out of an uninformed uh, and knowledge, but uh, we will make it out of uh, informed knowledge. And so it is good we understand the issues in the great controversy so that uh, our final decisions may be permanent. If we choose to follow God, then that is it. If we choose to follow our own way, then uh, uh, that is it also. And so Satan was not destroyed then because there are issues in great controversy that has to be resolved. And soon these issues will be answered. Man as well as angels must see the contrast between the principle of light and the prince of darkness. He must choose whom he will serve. And this is the greatest issue at stake. The choice is to be made. And God doesn't want anyone to be hurried in them. So the Lord has sent to our world a message of warning. Even the third angel's message, all heaven is waiting to hear us vindicate God's law, declaring it to be holy, just, and good. Revealed in Herod, April 16, 19, 01, paragraph um, 16. And so before Christ comes upon the face of the earth, he must have a people who have made their choices and no one that has been rushed into the decision. Are there those who have been sinning and repenting, sinning and repenting, and will they continue to do so until Christ shall come? May God help us that we may be truly united to Christ, the living vine and bear fruits to the glory of God, revealed herald, 
April 21, 1891. And uh, we need to retain, uh, uh, we need, uh, I say, we need not retain our sinful propensity. 7 BC 943.1. Uh, there is no reason after in the blazing of the light that we have received to continue saying that uh, we can continue in sin. In science of the time, December 30, 1889, heaven can never be gained by an imperfect obedience, for this will place all heaven in jeopardy and make possible a second rebellion. And um, I know that uh, I have done a great deal in covering 1888 um, and uh, Minneapolis, but then I, I'll have a, a series fully dedicated to the message of righteousness by faith not looking into the controversies there in 1888 and all that stuff. I just want to go through a clean slate of uh, presenting the message of righteousness by faith from a, a biblical standpoint and uh, from the inspired data that we have uh, around and uh, from the men that God led in, in the faith and uh, see how this theme runs so lovingly from the book of Genesis chapter 3. All to get all, all the way to the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 18. And uh, it's wonderful to look at these things so that the church may be prepared for the latter rain. And so I'll just have a, a, a full presentation, a full series on righteousness by faith. And I pray that the Lord will bless us. And so, uh, heaven can never be gained by an imperfect obedience, for this will place all heaven in jeopardy. Because you, you see, the, the, the obedience of Jesus Christ is not imperfect. And so if he gives unto us, he doesn't expect it to be imperfect. Jesus came to this world to save his people from their sins. He will not save us in our sins, for he is not the minister of sin. And so when we get plugged to Jesus Christ, you see the current flows and the current is uh, the righteousness of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God which is found in faith through Jesus Christ. But though we are carnal, we are to reckon ourselves dead and indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Science of the time, October 1, 1894, paragraph 4. Every transgression brings the soul into condemnation that provokes the divine displeasure. Messages to the young people. And so you offend in one and you offend in, offend in all. And we are told in my life today, no one who truly loves and fears God will continue to transgress the law in any particular. When man transgresses, he is under the condemnation of the law and it becomes to him a yoke of bondage. Whatever his profession may be, is not, may be, he is not justified, which means pardon. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Through obedience comes the sanctification of body, soul, and spirit. This sanctification is a progressive work and an advance from one stage of perfection to another advance. Again, if Satan seeks to divert the mind to law and sensual things, bring it back again and place it on eternal things. And when the Lord sees the determined effort made to retain only pure thoughts, he will attract the mind like the magnet, purify the thoughts, and enable them to cleanse themselves from every secret sin. Casting down imaginations and very high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That is 2 Corinthians 10 5. And uh, continued on in Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 2, page 587. The first work of those who will reform is to purify the imagination. If uh, the mind is led out in uh, a vicious direction, it must be retained to dwell only upon pure and elevated subjects. When uh, tempted to yield to a corrupt imagination, then flee to the throne of grace and pray for strength from heaven. In the strength of God, the imagination can be disciplined to dwell upon things which are pure and uh, heavenly. Again, messages to young people, page 53. If Satan sees he is in danger of losing one soul, he will exert himself the utmost to keep that one. And when the individual is aroused to his danger and with distress and fervor um, looks to Jesus for strength, certain fears he shall lose a captive and he calls a reinforcement of his angels to aid in the poor soul and a form of wall of darkness around him that heaven's light may not reach him. But uh, we understand that uh, 
as the evil angels throng around the person that they want to lead into sin, the heavenly angels also are sent to protect that soul. And so we may not give an excuse that um, uh, I did not, not get enough help from heaven. Messages to young people, page 53. But if the one in danger perseveres and in helpless and uh, helplessness and weakness cast himself upon the very of the blood of Christ, Jesus listens to the earnest prayer of faith and sends a reinforcement of those angels which excel in strength to deliver him. And that is what I'll just uh, say. Satan cannot endure to have his uh, powerful rival appeal to, for he fears and trembles before his Christ strength and majesty. At the sound of fervent prayer, Satan's whole host trembles. And when angels, all powerful, clothed with the armory of heaven, come to the help of the fainting, pursued soul, Satan and his host fall back, well knowing that their battle is lost to thee and in the herald uh, May 13, 1862. And so in summary, as one with us, a sharing in our needs and weaknesses, he was wholly dependent upon God, and in the secret place of prayer he sought divine strength that he might go forth breast for duty and trial, and we can still do the same, we can appeal to God for strength in our trial, when the individual is aroused to his danger and with distress and fervor looks to Jesus for strength, certain fears he shall lose a captive. If the one in danger perseveres in the helplessness and weak weakness, cast himself upon the merits of the blood of Christ, Jesus listens to the earnest prayer of faith and sends a reinforcement of the, those angels which exist in strength. And when angels, all powerful, clothed with the armor of heaven, come to the help of the first. Fending pursued soul, Satan and his host fall back well, knowing that their battle is lost. And so we have an army of heaven. What happens if I shall sleep and fall then? This is what we are told. And uh, you can check that in 1 John 2 1 that I write to you that you may not sin, but if you do, we have an advocate. It was through self-sufficient that Peter fell, and it was through repentance and humiliation that his feet were again established. Christ Object Lesson, page 156. In the record of his experience, every repenting sinner may find encouragement. Though Peter had grievously sinned, he was not forsaken. The words of Christ were written upon his soul. I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Luke 22:32. In his bitter agony of remorse, this prayer and the memory of Christ's look of love and pity gave him hope. Christ, after his resurrection, remembered Peter and gave the angel the message for the woman. Go your way, tell, go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Mark 16, 7. Peter's repentance was accepted by the sin-pardoning Savior. And uh, we may be sure that our sins will be pardoned. Continue on in 156, 157 of uh, Christ Object Lesson. The same compassion that uh, reached out to rescue Peter is extended to every one, every soul who has fallen under temptation. It is certain special levers to lead man into sin and then leave him helpless and trembling, fearing to seek for bad pardon. But why should we fear when God has said, let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me? and he shall make peace with me, Isaiah 27, 5. Every provision has been made for our infirmities, every encouragement offered us to come to Christ. Again, in uh, uh, continued on, and quoting Hebrews 7, 25, Christ offered up his broken body to purchase back God's heritage to give man another trial, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. In 1 John 2, 1, my little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Chains broken are hope and encouragement. And uh, this is in uh, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page uh, 93 to 94. Satan is uh, constantly at work, but few have any idea of his activity and subtlety. The people of God must be prepared to withstand the will for. It is this resistance that Satan dreads. He knows better than we do the limit of his power and 
how easily he can be overcome if we resist and face him. Through divine strength, the weakest saint is more than a match for him and all his angels, and if brought to the test, he will be able to prove his superior power. Therefore, Satan's step is noiseless, his movements stealthy, and his batteries masked. He does not venture to show himself openly, lest the, he arouse the Christian's dormant energies and send him to God in prayer. And so, um, John 4, 7, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It is like that uh, we don't spend so much time in prayer, and that is why we don't have the designing, uh, the designing spirit of uh, what is impending before us. But we can commit again to God in prayer, and uh, he will be able to show us just the time that we need to flee him when we are uh, about to be caught in the snares of the devil. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that uh, you may be able to bear it. 2 Peter 2, 9, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve them just unto the day of judgment to be punished. And so the Savior took upon himself the infirmities of humanity and lived a sinless life. That men might have no fear that uh, because of the weakness of human nature they would could not overcome. Christ came to make us partakers of the divine nature and his life declares that humanity combined with divinity does not commit sin. This is what the Father is seeking to accomplish through his Son to us. Ministry of Healing 180.5 We have looked at the nature of Jesus Christ. We have looked at Minneapolis 1888 and uh, we know that um, actually the truth was so sublime and uh, it was to get every child of God ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. It was not a message of discouragement. He bore my soul's disgrace that in his name I might be an overcomer and be exalted to his throne. Tell of his power, sing of his matchless love. In every trial he will be near you and he will give you grace and power according to your need. And you can read that in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 that grace is given according to the measure of which each, every individual needs that uh, God will send just that which is enough for you at the right time. Review and Herald, July 19, 1892. Signs of the time, May 2, 1900, Christ came to our world to show us how to live true, upright lives, and all who are Christian will carry out his principles. Again, we can overcome, yes, fully entirely. Jesus died to make a way of escape for us that uh, we might... Uh, overcome every fault, resist every temptation, and sit down at last with him in his throne. Our higher calling 353.4. Everyone who by faith obeys God's commandments will reach the condition of sinlessness in which Adam lived before his transgression. Signs of the time, July 23, 19, uh, 02. And uh, I'm just going so fast on this. He who has not sufficient faith in Christ to believe that he can keep him from sinning has not the faith that will give him an entrance into the kingdom of God. So uh, the book of Hebrews says that uh, those who come to him must believe that uh, he is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. We cannot come faint-hearted before the Lord for victory over sin. We cannot come in a doubtful way that... Uh, we are not sure if he will give us victory. Already the victory has been assured by him conquering the devil or on Calvary. And we can be sure that uh, that victory is ours. Christ won against the enemy for us, and he cannot withhold anything that is needful for us, that uh, we may be forever beaten, be beaten by the currents of the evil one back from our life, uh, from our pursuance of uh, victory over sin. And so Jesus knows the circumstance of every soul. The greater the sinner's guilt, the more he needs the Savior. His heart of divine love and sympathy is drawn out most of all for the one who is the most hopeless, hopelessly entangled in the snares of the enemy. With his own blood, he has signed the emancipation papers of the race. Minister of Healing 89.3. 
Jesus does not desire those who have been purchased at such a cost to become the sport of the enemy's temptation. He does not desire us to be overcome and perish. He who curbed the lions in their den and walked with his faithful witnesses amid the fiery flames is just as ready to work in our behalf to subdue every evil in our nature. Today he is standing at the altar of mercy, presenting before God the prayers of those who desire his help. He turns no weeping contrite one away. Freely he will pardon all who come to him for forgiveness and restoration. He does not tell to any all that he might reveal, but he bids every trembling soul take courage. Whosoever will may take hold of God's strength and make peace with him and he will make peace and that is a quotation from my, the book of Isaiah. and so as we wrap up this on the human nature of Jesus Christ and Victor over sin and him coming to provide that which we did not, did not have so that we may be what we are not the humanity of the son of God is everything to us it is the golden chain that binds our souls to Christ and through Christ to God this is to be our study. Christ was a real man. He gave proof of his humility in becoming a man, yet he was God in the flesh. When we approach this subject, we shall do well to heed the words spoken by Christ to Moses at the burning bush. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where all thou standest is holy ground. We should come to this study with the humility of a learner, with a contrite heart, and the study of the incarnation of Christ is a fruitful field which will repay the searcher who digs deep for hidden truth. And so may the Lord bless us with those remarks on the human, the divine nature of Jesus Christ and the human nature of Jesus Christ. And uh, we shall be looking into this issue of Minneapolis 1888. It is diagnosis, analysis, and solution in the last six presentation. It is my prayer that... Um, as we approach this issue of the nature of Jesus Christ, both divine and humanity, we may know the benefits of all of it, rather than just entering into debates and uh, trying not to listen to what is being spoken, but uh, trying to catch up something that is negative so that we may argue forth about this and that. Let us view it from every angle and whatever is profitable for your character and salvation, take it. Whatever is not profitable for you, cast it aside. But we should not be educated um, debaters looking to poke holes at everything. May the righteousness of Jesus Christ be accorded unto us as we continue seeking him. And uh, I know that the Lord is faithful and he will never leave us nor forsake us. As we seek him, he will answer all our prayers. And uh, may we pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that uh, the humanity and the divinity of Jesus Christ is everything to us. And uh, we can be profited by these studies as we approach them as with the spirit of a child and a learner. Bless your people as even we contemplate upon these things and the second coming of thy son, that we may not be found wandering in the balances of the sanctuary. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us until uh, we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>